Good afternoon everyone, I am Lynn Jeremy and today with Group 4, we shall be presenting our findings on the unusual motivational techniques found in the workplace. Our group has managed to interview three individuals currently in the workforce at various well-known companies. Firstly, we have Phoebe, a senior director at the Advisor Alliance Group, followed by Don, an ex-building manager from Lego and current employee of q -Tab. Lastly, we have Lorraine from the Harley Davidson Group. We shall start off our presentation with the four unusual techniques found in each of the workplace, starting with vision board and roadmap, followed by hands-on interaction with products, motivation through task identity, and company credit. We will then end off our presentation with some additional findings that we think are important to know. I will now pass the time to Trini who will continue our presentation. Thank you, Jeremy. So now, we will take a look at the first motivational technique mentioned by our first working professional. Um, AAG, something that uh, we do a little bit differently uh, will be doing the roadmap and vision. After interviewing Phoebe, who is a senior director at Advisor Alliance Group AAG, we learned that what motivates her and her employee to join and stay in the financial advisor industry is the unique goal setting that AAG guided all employees to do, which is the ability to plan and develop personal growth to allow the possibility of fast tracking for her career path. The vision board and roadmap have motivated her to work harder as she has a precise and challenging yet attainable goal in mind. This is an unusual motivation technique compared to other industries where the goal setting is more work-related to achieve their work KPI. So now I'll pass on my time to Roy. Here is a snippet of what our second working professionals has shared. I did come across some unique motivational technique that Lego did provide, such as like providing us with a Lego set where we get to kind of build our own deck Lego our set. During the interviewee, we found out that Lego encourages staff to have fun during work. Employees are allowed to play with Lego sets during work hours as long as they are able to complete their assigned tasks on time. This is unusual compared to traditional offices whereby playing with toys during work hours will be frowned upon. Lego's product is inherently playful, so encouraging employees to engage with it during work hours aligned with their brand identity. It also reinforces a fun and creative company culture, which can motivate employees to work harder. With this benefit, Dawn is motivated to remain as an employee in the company. Nonetheless, she left the company for her desired job role as a marketer in Q10. Now I'll pass the time over to Martin. Thank you, Roy. In the interview with Dawn, she mentioned that the employees will get rewarded for the hard work with company credit in a Q10 platform. This is a unique motivational method in the e-commerce industry as its big competitors like Shopee and Lazada do not extend this offering. This is the technique that seeks to attract and retain qualified employees. This incentive pay system, specifically the bonus system, acknowledges their efforts and provides them with the tangible benefit that they can enjoy. This is further highlighted by the expectancy theory of motivation by VRU and its performance to outcome expectancy. Since employees know that having a good performance is linked to getting company credits, the higher the effort they put into the task, the greater the benefits. Now, I'll pass my time over to Chin Kang. Thank you, Martin. Our third interviewee is Lorraine, who is a manager in APEC, Fulfillment of Operation at Harley Davidson. We'll now take a look at a short clip of an interview with her. Perils, it does give you this uh, increased sense of awareness of the, the company identity. During our interview with Don and Lorraine, we discovered that managers have empowered their workforce by granting them early access to products before public release, inviting their feedbacks and integrating their insights into product development. When individuals have the opportunity to engage directly with the product they sell, they would experience a sense of connection and ownership. Employees feel valued and respected, knowing that their opinions matter and their contribution directly influence product development. This practice transcends mere strategy. It serves as a potent motivator for employees aligning with job characteristics framework. By fostering task identity through product sampling, managers would be able to cultivate a workforce where employees are highly motivated. I'll now pass my time to Kevin. Thank you, Jun Kang. Now we shall delve into the additional findings that our group has found. We will be discussing the leadership styles that these professionals have used at the organization alongside some team cultures we have found unique to them. 
Phoebe uses a leadership style which is supportive, collaborative, and empowering. The mentorship working style between seniors and juniors of the Advisors Alliance Group serves various purposes, but more importantly, minimizing the power distance between colleagues. Lorraine uses a similar leadership style too, with a strong focus on communication and partnership, which helps to build trust and mutual respect, strengthening team relations. Dawn has used two different leadership styles in different organizations. Lego emphasizes a team culture of individualism, where every member of the team is unique. As such, Dawn promotes individualism among team members as this promotes innovation and creativity. Hu Ten, however, promotes a culture of collectivism. As such, Dawn focuses on group accomplishments amongst her team members, facilitating communal ownership of work targets and a strong team support network. We will now cover the interesting findings of our project task bar. Harley Davidson prioritizes overseas office and retail visits among the operations team. Lorraine's supervisors encourages them to visit the markets regularly, forge closer ties with the overseas sales department so that they can put a face to a name and reach out directly in future. I will now pass the time on to you, Long. Thank you, Kevin. Another interesting finding that we have gathered from our interview with Don is that Ku Ten has a practice of holding their interdepartmental lunch every month. To Don, this monthly lunch is especially important to her as given that she is a marketing executive, she has to work closely with different departments in order to market the company effectively. This lunch hence will help foster a better working relationship and greater understanding with people from other departments. We feel that this practice is an effective way to foster constructive conflict that will help the company maximize their potential. With a better working relationship between different departments, both parties will be more understanding of each side's positions and choose to work together to resolve it. This stops the development of a us versus them mentality and prevents the escalation to a destructive conflict. Hence, we feel that other companies can adopt this practice to improve the company's decision making. Good job, Kevin, on your annually sales performance. Here's a Lego set that you can play with during your break times. Then, this Lego set ain't gonna pay the bills. In conclusion, while we recognize that the unusual motivational techniques were useful in incentivizing employees, after exploring the four techniques with all three interviewees, we have found that Taylor's theory of motivation is still the strongest motivator, as mentioned by the interviewees as well.